I've never filmed anything in 360 before, but I have the chance to borrow this 360 camera, so I thought it would actually be really fun to take you through the process with me as I try to figure out how to do 360 video. Even though I've never done it myself, I'm really curious about it because it seems really fun and really interesting, but I've been kind of scared of the process of trying to do 360 video, and so what I wanna see is if there's actually a usable workflow that's not too insane. So this is not a sponsored video in any way, but the camera that I got to borrow is the Samsung Gear 360. It's the 2017 version. Kind of looks like a baby monitor, but it's actually really well built. I actually like this little camera a lot. It has this rubber ring, which makes it look even more like a baby's toy. But this ring goes on the bottom and then the camera can stand up on its own. It's a really simple camera. You just set it down, hit record, and that's it. It's a 360 degree camera, so you don't need to worry about framing your shot. You just need to find an interesting perspective to film from. Since this is my first time using it, I decided to keep it a little bit simple. And it turns out that one of the symbol stands for my drum set is the same size as the tripod mount on the bottom of this camera. So I decided it'd be neat to put this on a symbol stand and just play the drums, watch that in 360. Maybe that'll look cool. I haven't seen that before. I think that'll be a fun way to start out in 360 video. So I finished filming everything with this camera on the drums, but the problem is I can't put the 360 degree footage into this video because it's just a standard traditional video. So that's actually going to be uploaded as a separate 360 degree video. I'll link to it right here. I'll also put a link down below in the description and I'll put a link at the end of this video. Since they're two different file formats, it needs to be two different videos. Now the biggest challenge that I've come into is figuring out how to get the footage from here into Final Cut Pro, which is what I edit with. Since version 10.4, which came out in late 2017, Final Cut Pro has had 360 degree video editing support, which I thought meant I could just take the micro SD card from this camera and use it to import the footage directly into Final Cut Pro, but I was very wrong. <laughs> It's not quite how it works at all, actually. If you take the footage straight from the camera and put it into Final Cut, it actually looks really, really weird. And the reason for this is it needs to be stitched together first. And when it's stitched together, it kind of looks like a weird panorama photo where it takes the 360 degrees and like lays it out flat. So the first thing before you can actually edit the footage is you need to stitch it together using some kind of stitching software. I looked and I couldn't find any good free options for stitching software. There are several paid options, but I didn't want to pay for it. Luckily, Samsung does make a Gear 360 app that's for iOS, Android, and Windows and Mac desktops, so it's pretty much almost all of the operating systems, which is really, really helpful, but it's a very, very basic software. So. First off the bat, it took me 20 minutes to import the three minute clip of me playing drums into the software. And then straight from there, the only options I had were to upload it directly to YouTube or Facebook or to Samsung's own proprietary VR server. And it took a long time before I figured out that if you go into the Gear 360 preferences, there's an option that says save to. And if you don't change this, it's automatically going to save 360 video to just sort of a random directory on your computer that you might not be able to find or might not even think where to look for. So it's very important that you then change this to export somewhere that you want it to go to. But the weird part is you don't have any control over clicking export. The reason it turns out that it took 20 minutes to import that footage is because it was stitching and exporting it at the same time. So it's kind of frustrating because I didn't know about that, but in the end, it's kind of neat because the footage was already stitched and exported by the time it was imported into the program. Once I found that out, I was able to open a new 360 project in Final Cut Pro. I chose monoscopic. Then the footage worked really, really well. As soon as I dragged it into Final Cut Pro, everything was there. It looked kind of weird in the preview window, but if you click on view and you select 360, then next to it, you'll actually have a window that you can click and drag and control and view in 360. The footage that you're seeing in the main preview window is your flattened out 360 degree image, which looks very, very strange. But the 360 degree window is where it's actually projected around a sphere and then you can click and drag and see what the final product is going to be like. So from here, I was able to edit the clip like I wanted to. Since I was playing the drums, the drums are really loud and this camera sounded terrible since it was right up against them. So I had a secondary microphone recording, which didn't sound incredible, but sounded better than this. I wanted to make sure to add in that audio. Also wanted to be able to trim off the beginning and the end. And anytime you're doing like, you know, a bigger 360 project, 
I would think you would definitely want the control of editing it yourself just like any other video. And once it's stitched and put into the software, it does work pretty much like any other video except that it might be a bit slow. I found out that my computer, which is a 2013 MacBook Pro, really does not like 360 video. It slowed down like crazy, but it did it. It got everything done. Now the last kind of tricky part was actually exporting it from Final Cut Pro and uploading the video to YouTube. There are a few ways you can do this, but I found that for me, the easiest way was actually to export directly to YouTube from within Final Cut Pro, which is not something I normally do at all. But the reason this works for 360 video is Final Cut will then automatically inject all of the metadata into the file so when it's uploaded to YouTube, YouTube knows that it's a 360 video and then can display it that way so that other people can actually watch it and do the whole VR thing and drag it around and really see what it's supposed to be as a 360 video. So I just made sure to select the best quality, that the video was gonna be full HD, and then I just uploaded it as a private video so that I could go back and adjust the thumbnail and the title and all those things later before making it public. And that's pretty much it. The trickiest part was figuring out how to get the footage stitched from this so that I could bring it into Final Cut Pro. The Samsung 360 software is free as long as you have a serial number from a camera. The only frustrating part is that it just doesn't tell you that it's exporting stuff to a random spot on your computer, but as long as you go into preferences and adjust that, everything should be fine. So in the end, it actually took me quite a while to figure out how 360 video works. But now that I've figured out the workflow, it's not too bad. It's a little clunkier than I'd like it to be, and I think it's a little clunkier than it needs to be. And then editing 360 video can be a little tricky if your computer's a little slower, a little older, it might struggle a bit. But the workflow is definitely manageable enough that I think it makes 360 video a viable option. I did it for Final Cut Pro, but the stitching process would be the same no matter what editing software you're using. I just really prefer Final Cut Pro. And I'm really hopeful that over the next few years as these cameras continue to change and this technology continues to develop that it will become a bit more user friendly and the workflow will be streamlined even more where when you're working with 360 video, it's really no different than working with any other video because then I think it would really open the doors for a lot of people to jump on and do really cool stuff that we haven't seen before and that's always pretty exciting. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think about 360 video down in the comments below. Maybe you have some tips and pointers that would be helpful to a beginner like me. I'd really appreciate that. If you haven't checked out or haven't had a chance to check out the 360 video I recorded with the drums over there, go ahead and take a look at that. It actually looks really cool on the symbol. It's kind of a cool perspective I haven't seen before. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.